I'm Anna Roberts here in Chelsea Market. We're about to head into the Food Network kitchens to see Damaris Phillips. This way. We are here with Damaris Phillips. You may recognize her from Food Network Star. She's the most recent winner, and she's here to tell us about her new show. Thank you, thank you for being here. Tell us about the show. Okay, so I started a show, it's called Southern at Heart. It's on Sunday mornings at 10.30, and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm gonna be cooking modern Southern food. It's really just traditional Southern food with a flair, my own personal flair on it. Um, and I'm using it to, to teach guys how to connect with the ladies in their lives. I wanted to introduce people to what they can expect to see. And so I have my mashed potatoes. They're a little bit different though because I put in white yams and goat cheese. Um, and then we also have greens, and these are a little bit special because they have miso paste in them um, and a little bit of sriracha. So we're putting in the yams and the potatoes together. Oh yeah, these are white yams. Like I'm hiding them, and I love to skin on because why peel when you don't have to? These will break down. Um, plus rustic looks like homemade, and homemade always tastes better, so you know, show off a little bit. Nobody will think you like picked them up at the grocery store and said you made them. Okay, water into there. This is cold water into the pan. And why are we using cold water? Uh, if you start with hot water, it'll the outside of the potatoes will break down and get all mushy um, before the centers are cooked. So you just wanna add cold water. And once it comes up to a boil, you're almost ready. And we're just gonna salt. And you're yeah. adding a liberal amount of salt. Absolutely. Yeah. And why do you put a lot of salt in before? Because if you don't, then you're going to have to salt a lot at the end. The inside of those potatoes are only ever going to get cooked if you put salt in the water. Perfect. So, these little guys are nice and steamy. They are also very, very soft. If you touch them, they just fall right apart. Wow. See? Perfect. Nice. Yeah, we're just going to throw them into a mixer. You can use a hand mixer or you can use a masher. It doesn't matter. I have a mixer, so I, I you know, let it do the work when it can. And you have to use the whisk attachment. Oh yeah, you're trying to make them fluffy potatoes. You so it's wanna... like a buttermilk frosting, but mashed potatoes. But potatoes, yes, potato frosting. Those are nice and steamy. Because they're steamy, I can put in raw garlic. I'm just putting it in because I have raw garlic. Um, this is goat cheese. This is another hidden ingredient. So we have the yams, which are gonna be nice and sweet and buttery. And then I have goat cheese, which is gonna be creamy and tangy. So that goes in. This is instead of a lot of butter and cream. Absolutely. And is adding another dimension. So butter and cream are delicious. They're nice and creamy. But they don't have that tang that goat cheese has. Okay, we need a little butter. butter. We're going to use about a half a stick into the pot. So that's three pounds of yams and potatoes all together. We just turn it on. You want to turn it on low. You don't want to overmix. If you overmix, you're going to get gummy potatoes. I always mix in the milk after. I see kind of how much water you accumulated during your boiling process. So we just turn that on. So you want to mix it a and, little then, bit. and then you figure out if it needs anything if it needs, more. Yeah, you'll tell, it, it'll look dry. And then you'll know to put in a little bit more milk. So let's put in a little bit of milk. And this is whole milk? This is whole milk. You could use skim milk if you wanted to. You could use goat's milk, you could use almond milk, anything. Just something to give it a little bit of, of moisture. Yeah, and it, they'll come together real easily. Um, Lovely. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna scrape wow. down the sides. And then we're gonna season it, just some salt and some pepper. And here is where you could add fresh herbs as well, right? Absolutely, you could put thyme, you could put chives, you could put parsley, you could put rosemary, any old thing you can imagine. Mm. Wow. You could put it right? Look how easy it is. It already is so fragrant, it smells like Thanksgiving in here. It's the goat cheese, it is the garlic. It's, you know, a little bit of butter never hurt anything. Let's do some salt. Here, I'll help you out. Okay, pepper. Pepper. We're using fresh ground pepper because I have it. If you have white pepper, that works great too. Um, I'm put in a little bit. I'll pinch it, I guess. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Three or four or five pinch. Uh, it's, it's a lot of potatoes, y'all. It is a lot of potatoes. I mean, really. Oh wow. They're done. So you know they're done when they they come together. They come together. They're nice and smooth. Like you can see that it's pretty. I mean, you have some definite, definite rustic texture to it. There's some of the skins left in. This is never going to be super smooth because I didn't use a ricer, I just used a mixer. But again, rustic looks homemade and homemade equals delicious. So. Mm. Five inches is necessary <laughs> to achieve 
that amazing flavor. It's creamy, wow. it's nice and salty. There's a little bit of, of tang. There's like that mm -hmm. earthy kind of bite from the garlic. And what do we have to pair with? Um, miso greens. So in the South, we eat a lot of greens and you're always trying to figure out how to make your you know special greens, and this is mine. Um, I have kale and I have mustard greens. Kale, mm -hmm. super, super delicious. Very, very popular right now. Um, and then mustard, a little bit less known because it's a little spicy, um, but they balance each other really nice. And I just sauteed them with a little bit of miso paste. And miso is taking place of the pork product that you usually see. Mm -hmm. So it's adding a lot of salt, a lot of that like meaty umami flavor. And then to balance that, I put some sriracha, which is a hot sauce, and um, sauteed it all up in a pan. It took about 10 minutes from start to finish. Wow. Right? Well, I see other something else in here. What else is in there? Oh, those are the stems. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't throw away anything. So I just take the stems, I stem it out, and I chop them up. And wow. then I saute those first because they're going to take longer. So I chop those little babies up, and then after they're nice and soft, I put the leaves in. Then I put in the miso. And it really is so very simple. Mm -hmm. And I think the absolute perfect complement to these guys. So if you'd like, we can taste it all together. Let's taste it. Now, what is your favorite utensil to use in the kitchen? Wooden spoons. And why is that? Because they're, you know, they're inexpensive. They're durable. Almost everybody has them. And you can cook with it and serve with it. Perfect. <laughs> so I have to do less dishes. Okay, so miso greens. Yeah. And this is going to be spicy. There's going to be a real nice earthiness to it. There's going to be some heat mm. um, and some salt. Thank and it's going to go perfectly with these potatoes. Put those on there and let's try. All right. Okay. So see if these are any greens you've ever had. All right. All right. Mm. Wow. So mm. the miso really does kind of taste like bacon or like pork, it pork chops really maybe? It really does. I think it, it goes great in soups. It goes awesome anytime you're sauteing. It is a fantastic additive. Be sure to watch Damaris on Southern At Heart on the Food Network, Sundays at 10.30 a.m. Thanks, Damaris. Thank you all so much.